In a recent short form video that I put out, I got hundreds of nasty comments accusing me of absolutely annihilating the screw heads while I was installing some soft closed door dampers. The truth is, the screw heads were and are perfectly fine. People were confusing this sound with this sound. That second one is the sound of screws being cammed out, basically stripping the screw heads, which is definitely not a good thing. Now I will say this is an easy mistake to make because the small M12 surge impact driver that I was using is a fluid technology and it's actually a lot softer sounding than a traditional impact drill, which makes a sound more like this. A lot of people in the comments asked, why would I use an impact driver in this case instead of a traditional drill? Well, there's actually six reasons. The first reason is that impact drivers are so much smaller. These things, look at the size difference between these two. I mean, this thing fits in tighter spaces. It's way easier to stick in a bag and to take with you. And with that, it's also just like this little fistful of steel. I've used that phrase many times in my videos because impact drivers, especially good compact impact drivers, like this one here, my M12 Surge, this thing is just all power and it's disproportionately powerful given the size of the tool. That takes us to reason number two, which is that the impact drivers are actually stronger than drills. They have so much torque because of the mechanism and how that mechanism works. As an example, this little M12 right here, a 12 volt driver, is actually 90% as powerful on paper as this full size 18 volt drill from Rigid. The fact is, it's actually way more powerful and in tests where they've done side by side comparisons, this thing loses every time. Now you take that and bring it up to a full size impact driver like this DeWalt 20 volt here. This one actually has twice the torque of this comparable or actually much larger sized drill. Now going back to number one, take a look at the difference here. This stubby little thing, twice as much power as this whole huge thing. It's really no comparison. Speaking of power, in that video I showed earlier where people were complaining about me possibly stripping out the screw heads, which I was not, I was actually using this drill, the M12 Surge, which has a hydraulic or fluid based impacts mechanism, and I was using it on speed one. What that does is it slows down the driving speed as well as the impacts per minute and makes it easy for you to have more precise control. If I wanted to go all out, I can move up to two or I can move up to three and get full power on this thing. But because I was doing some light work, I switched it over to one and that made it really easy for me to be in control of how far I drove those screws in. Easily the best way for me to show you how this works and why they're so powerful is for you to actually see the mechanism inside. So I've cut a little viewing hole into this heart impact driver and take a look at what happens while it's trying to use the impact mechanism. There's an anvil inside that strikes the hammer using rotational force moving in the same direction that you're driving. Unlike using downward force, it's actually twisting the screw into place while it's driving it. Because of this design, it is way less likely to actually cause cam out, which is when your bit is slipping inside the screw head itself and causes it to strip out and round. Reason number three is speed, sort of. There's some pros and cons here. When it comes to loading a bit, for example, it doesn't get any easier than that. I just throw that quarter inch hex bit in and I'm good to go. If I want to do the same thing over here on my drill, I've got to grab it tighten it up into place. It's not a big deal, but it is faster to use a quarter inch hex bit in a driver. That said, there are definitely times when using a drill is going to be faster. There are a lot of advantages and I will address the fact that I'm never gonna stop using my drills. They have so many places where they are the right tool for the job, but in general, I'm always gonna see if my impact driver is gonna be the right fit for me first. The second portion of the speed side of things is that these are simple machines. This is about as complicated as impact drivers tend to get. They have maybe a few settings in one spot and then you've got your forward, your reverse, and your trigger. That's really all there is to it. So they're easy to use. You know it's almost always gonna be in the right place. If anything, you might just double check that one setting. A drill, on the other hand, has a lot of different features built into it and they can be complicated to understand. So with that, you've gotta to check to make sure everything's tight on your chuck. You've gotta to check to make sure you're in the right gear. Of course, you've got your same forward and reverse. Then you've got a clutch to see if you've got that in the right setting or if it's engaged at all. You gotta check to make sure you're not in hammer drive, whether you're in drive mode versus drill mode and on and on. So there's just kind of a lot to it, which again, these are good things for what it does, but it's just not as simple and quick as just grabbing it and driving. 
Speaking of all those features on a drill, I put together a handy drill feature guide that will walk you through really quickly exactly what features do what, so the next time you do grab your drill, you make sure that you've got everything set up right, and you know how to take advantage of the many features of a traditional drill. You can check that out using the links in the description below, or check out the little shopping bag icon in that bottom left corner. Reason number four is that impact drivers are so much lighter. When you're working on a job all day or doing a larger project, having that lightweight makes a huge difference in terms of fatigue and your ability to keep going on a project. My little M12 Surge here, for example, weighs just over a pound and a half without the battery. Obviously batteries are gonna add a little bit, but even this one takes such a small battery that it doesn't make a huge difference. Have that in your hand all day versus something bigger and bulkier, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. I asked Google's artificial intelligence engine, Bard, to tell me on average how much lighter an impact driver is than its brother or cousin or whatever you want to call it, the traditional drill. And it said on average they're 35% lighter. And that sounds about right to me. In many cases I think they're even lighter than that. But it is a night and day difference when you're carrying one versus the other. Reason number five, impact drivers are safer to use. There's one main thing to consider with this and that is kickback. You're probably familiar with it, but just in case you're not, if you're ever drilling something, let's say you're drilling a hole into a board and then the bit locks into the material and then instead of the bit twisting and rotating, the entire drill rotates. It also takes with it your hand, your wrist, your arm, your shoulder, the whole thing and it gets really dangerous. People have broken bones and had other serious injuries as the result of kickback. Because of how an impact driver mechanism works, there's no risk of getting kickback. If there's resistance on it, it's just going to spin in place rather than take your arm along with you. This is really nice to have. It means you don't need a handle on them. You'll see that impact drivers don't have even a spot to mount a handle onto them because it's not needed. You can use these one-handed very comfortably and very safely. A quick side note when it comes to safety is that when you're loading a traditional fluted drill bit like one of these, then with an impact driver, obviously you can't put in a traditional rounded one. You have to use one with a quarter inch hex shank. And with that, that means A, it's really easy just to clip it in and you're done. But unlike the traditional drill, this has a lot of advantages, like I said, but one of the disadvantages is when you're chucking up the drill, you're doing this, trying to hold it steady, and there's an increased likelihood of you cutting your hands on the flute here one of the sharp flutes of the drill. So not something that I think people deal with a lot, but it's nice knowing that with the impact driver, not even an issue. You just pop the thing in and you're done. Reason number six is kind of a culmination of all the things we've talked about so far, and that is that the impact drivers, in my opinion, are just generally easier to use. Hilti recently came out with what they're calling an exoskeleton. Now this concept has been around for a long time, but this is the first time we're seeing this used by average workers in the workplace. The idea is for anybody working overhead on a regular basis, it provides extra support for your arms so that you can do that overhead work and it's reducing some of the strain on your shoulders and your arms. It's pretty awesome. If you haven't seen it, you want to check that out. And Hilti, I already asked you for one, so if you want to send me one, I'd love to show people how cool this thing is. But that is an awesome technology, and I think this is kind of similar in a way where you're just doing less work. It's the tool giving you a mechanical advantage so that you don't have to use your body, your muscles, your strain to provide the power that's needed to do the job. Let's be very clear here, the drill isn't going anywhere. This is a wonderful machine, always has been, always will be. We've got your chuck that allows you to chuck up any bit from 1 16th up to a half inch. You've got your clutch, your hammer mode, your drill mode, your drive mode. You've got your different gears, your sensitive trigger, all the different things that make the drill super important and really the only tool to use in certain circumstances. But with that said, Anytime I can grab an impact driver, I'm gonna grab that first. If it's not gonna do the job, I'll move over to my drill, but this is usually my first choice these days. Now again, if you wanna learn a little bit more about some of the features that people simply aren't understanding when it comes to drills because they just haven't been taught, I've got a video that you can check out right here that explains each of those features. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.